Joe's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I got a simple little project for us here today. It just came into the shop. There's really not much to it. Uh, so it's a steel column, a round steel column that's only six foot six inches long. Uh, three inch schedule 40 round tube. And on each end, I've got a six by six by quarter inch thick plate. Uh, one of the plates is going to be embedded in a concrete footing. The other one is going to have four 916 holes an inch in from each corner. We'll take care of that with a mag drill. And then it's going to get welded on and that will be bolted to a beam. Uh, the existing one has been corroded, it's rotted out in the corner of the building, it's starting to collapse a little bit. So we're going to get that replaced with this new product here. Uh, but what, what, I'm, what is a little bit different or what I want to do with this one is uh, the welding process. Uh, typically on something like this, I would be stick welding this, probably uh, a three pass method. Um, you know, taking some time and, and to getting that around there, stick welding it, and, and that's all good and everything. There's no problems. That's what I've done in the past. But uh, I'm going to try something that's relatively new to me. Well, new to me, maybe not new to you guys, is dual shield flux core. Now, I've recently started using this just, just a couple of months ago, and I haven't really had a chance to to use it on anything and I thought this would be a, a great opportunity for that. Uh, try something a little bit different and we'll see if we can uh, I'll make that happen and be glad to show you guys uh, about how everything is going to happen doing that. So uh, let's get started on this nice little project. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take my flap disc and I'm going to grind both sides of this pipe back uh, a couple of inches or so all the way around the, the black this black pipe has got some sort of coating on here I'm, I'm sure it's to prevent corrosion or something and so we're just going to grind this back all the way around so we have some uh, uh, good adhesion good penetration with the with the new weld but I'll tell you the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these gloves on I uh, uh, last night I was working on a new video that's going to be up and coming and uh, I got a little careless and uh, ended up cutting my Cut my thumb open last night and only because I was careless, I wasn't wearing gloves and the particular project I'm working on, which you guys will see here in a couple weeks, uh, slice it right down to the bone. Not good. So I got to start wearing my gloves, start thinking about safety a little bit more, more often. So uh, let's get this ground down here. Yeah, that was actually the, the night video I put up a few weeks ago. I got a little careless. I was sharpening the uh, blade with, uh, with a file. My thumb slipped off the file and yeah. Slice my thumb open. But anyways, we're just getting the uh, coating off the metal right here, getting it down to some nice clean metal to uh, be sure that uh, we get some uh, good weld adhesion here. All right, now that I got that all grinded and it's to the side, uh, I got the six inch uh, square plate, quarter thick. And this thing is exactly square. Um, it is exactly square. So what I've got is I've got, and I need them one inch in from each corner. so. I just have a piece of one inch wood stock right here. I'm just going to hold it on the edge here of, of all four sides and just going to mark that. Fairly simple. And once I get this all marked out here all the way around, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take my center punch and center punch the intersections right there. Well, there they are. I got all four corners. Ouch. Gosh darn it. All right. Now, just a little center punch in each corner right here. And we're ready for the mag drill. All right, so the center punches aren't uh, center punch holes aren't necessary in this. This is just something that uh, that I like to do. You can see the drill bit itself has a, a centering pin on it, and you can just center center that centering pin over top of your crosshairs or marks, and it uh, locks into place and it's uh, stays stationary. You never have to uh, worry about it moving. All right, and there it is. Simple as that. Four holes, absolutely machined perfectly. That mag drill is amazing. All right, so I got my plates all drilled out. Uh, all four holes are there. Now, all there's left to really do is just weld the two end plates on both sides. Now, ideally, what I'd like to do is be able to 
be able to stand this pipe up on here and get it nice and plumb and nice and square. I, I've measured that this is six foot eight, or I should say six foot six inches long. I've measured from the top of my welding table to my roof line. I, I've got like six, eight. So I just have a couple of inches of clearance, which is gonna be perfect. Oh, good God. You know, and the, and the, and the beauty too is this end of the uh, three inch pipe is a factory end, so it comes with a little bevel already. So that's gonna be great for welding. So what I want to do is I want to get this lined up right now, get it perfectly square on the plate, and then I'm going to tack weld it, and I'm going to use some 6011, some 332nd 6011, put four or five tacks all the way around this thing, get everything nice and secure before we go ahead and uh, use a dual shield flux screw on that. So let's do it. So basically what I need to get center to center on this all the way around is I need an inch and a quarter from each end or from each side of the pipe exactly and that's going to that's going to get me center and I'm fairly close. You know, that's the problem. This is one thing I've got to fix is my tabletop right here. This quarter inch plate on the top really I got to get a big three-quarter inch plate or something on top of this to get everything nice and flat. And my, right now, my tabletop is so uneven, it makes it difficult to, to get everything to, to be nice and plumb and nice and square. Well, there it is right there. Couldn't be any better than that. It's an inch and a quarter all the way around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the... A stick welder right now and just get some tacks on this all the way around so we can uh, get going. All right, so hey, I got my heavy welding jacket on, I got my boots on, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I've got a 332 seconds uh, 6011 right here on about 60 amps, and I'm gonna go ahead and just tack this in several places all the way around so. Everything is nice and secure before we uh, get into the flux work. Let's do it. All right, so I mean, I got a little overboard right here with the tacks with the uh, 6011, but uh, you know, they look a little sloppy and a little ugly there, but uh, once they're hit with the wire brush and the slide hammer, they cleaned up pretty good and uh, yeah, it worked out pretty well. All right, so I've got the tacks over places around here, so I'm just gonna take my wire wheel and go around and clean everything up nice and clean. Uh, so we have. Okay, 26 volts, 525 inches a minute. We're gonna see how she rolls. The beauty of this is this whole thing is gonna be inside of a wall. So this will be the first time that I've actually used dual fill flux core in a long time. I hope it works out. Um, you know, the weld's gotta be okay, but it's gonna be hidden inside of a inside of a wall. So it's just mainly down load. There's no lateral force on this on this uh, beam whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a two inch long bead. I'm worried about warpage real bad. So I'm going to just two inches over here, come over here, do two more inches and work my way around see if I can reduce the warpage. So here we go. Let's give it a try. Wow, that was amazing. Sort of amazing. Uh, I'm going to let that cool. I'm going to hit this side over here, which is work away around. Now I know starting to stop and starting to stop and maybe not be the, the real answer for a real good uh, penetrated weld, but um, we'll see how this works. Uh, looks like the 525 inches a minute seems to be pretty good. Well, let's just keep going. All right, so I want to keep the stick out at about three quarters of an inch away. Everything seems to be burning real smooth. Real, you know, not too much manipulation uh, with the torch, and everything seems to be flowing pretty good.
All right, well, there it is. Uh, turned out really clean, really good, you know, good tie-in all the way around here. Uh, you know, that's the beauty about dual shielded flux core. You know, if you get your settings just right and everything is dialed in, everything works perfectly, you know, and all I've done is I've just taken a slag hammer, uh, chipped the slag off, I hit it with a wire brush and just wiped everything down with a, with a, with a rag. And you can see it's virtually splatter free. There is zero splatter all the way around this thing. Nice and clean. Everything works really good. Looks pretty cool. Well, there it is. The little column project is complete. And I gotta say, the Dual Shield Flux Core really excelled on this project right here. I made a couple of adjustments. Uh, the CFH is about 45. I brought the wire uh, feed speed down to about 480 inches a minute, and I'm running 26 volts. You get the right combination with Dual Shield Flux Core, and there's nothing like it. It's smooth, it's clean, and it's fast. It's a great process. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.